All right, guys, we went down to the flea market and got some copies of Gyromite. Hold on, they're not just any ones. Because what do they have inside of them? The precious, all consuming 60 pin converter. 72 pin to 60? Is it something mm -hmm. like that. 60 to 72. Yeah. Okay, anyways, it's the Japanese uh, Famicom converters. So, here's what a Famicom game looks like. They're not very big. They're and this one's in relatively silver looking shape. Because, well, it's been protected from the elements. So, how do these work and how do you load them up? Well, since this is a copy of Gyromite, uh, the transistor side, or I like to say the chip side with the little resistor here, this is your label side. And here's your back side. So, this is, in other words, this would be label side. So, when you're sticking the game in, that's label side. And if you're just, all you got is just the chip, the black blob chips on the back or go towards the back of the uh, converter. The games come out and go back in pretty hard, so be a little gentle with it. You might get freaked out the first couple times you stick them in there because they do take quite some force. But once you get them stuck in, they're pretty in, pretty uh, pretty well stuck in there. But it does work. So this is Gyromai here, and you just stick it in your system. If you got an NES 2, this is probably the best tool to use. If you have a regular NES, what you should do is keep your gyromite cart or whatever it came out of, take the little screws on it, put them back in, put your new game in that, put the chip back in there, and you should be able to load up on the regular NES. Unless you're playing the NES with the kit with the cover off. Which sounds crazy. But there you go. So it does work. And they are out there. So you're probably wondering uh, what do the what does the suspected cart look like that always has the Famicom Converter. Well, the Famicom Converter can be found in Gyromite. But what kind of Gyromite? Well, it's a purplish, dark purple grape color. And the way you can really tell by it is that most of them are going to have five screws. And there's not going to be any tabs. Remember, uh, I forget who we watched. The guy that with the Nintendo Tuesdays, whoever he is. I forget his name. But he did an episode in which he talked about why there were no tabs on these early ones. Because they had five screws. Nintendo eliminated two screws and put tabs on the top. And just so you see what I'm talking about. Tabs versus no tabs. So, anyways. That's what he was talking about. And since there's no tabs here, they got five screws. And this is one of the earliest carts. This is the first nine months production run for Nintendo carts. So what usually ends up happening is you just undo those. And inside there'll be the Famicom converter. So, but what you really gotta look out for is the weight. They are slightly heavier. You can just tell by feeling. If you get a bunch of general mic carts and some of them feel heavier, that's the only true way to know that if it has the converter or not. Uh, I talked to him in 12 Bird one time about the Famicom converter and he said no nah, I don't have it I tried looking for it in a bunch of gyro mic carts at some flea market or whatever and he said I couldn't find any so uh, for you guys looking out there keep looking almost any of these carts with five with five uh, screw holes s screw holes and no tabs is probably going to be it and another thing to look out for is how these things are designed on the back side the non-label side you'll see they got these little tabs that go on the left hand side of it or if you're looking at it from underneath it should still be the left hand side or right hand side if you're looking at it from another angle so there you go that's the first thing to look for and that's on the only the back side the front side also has the same thing well I didn't even notice that so other sides gonna have them just little tabs on both sides so there you go there you go as far as that's concerned so if you really want to look for them uh, and if you're into import gaming, look for it. If you're not, don't worry about it. It's probably not even worth your time, energy, or thought process to go and open up a bunch of old Nintendo cards just to try and find these. They're not really worth that much. But if you like the original NES and its uh, RCA video versus RF out, that is the best video quality you can get. 
So there you go. That's the only reason I want to have one of these is if you want to play Japanese Nintendo games on your American Nintendo with composite video instead of RF. So there you go. Just thought I'd show off the little... We got two of these, so I don't know what we're going to do with the other one. But I guess just in case one breaks down, that would be the only reason to have it. I might find more, I might not. But my guy didn't even care because he knew it was a cheapo game that wasn't worth anything. So he didn't even care me looking at him. I guess he, he didn't even know anyways. So, But there you guys go. So if you've ever wondered what if these are really out there and if you really can find and score some, yes you can.